Hello everyone and welcome back to Free Code Camp OKC. Uh, today's talk is going to be the continuation of CSS Basics and this is part two. Uh, my name is Amir Joshi and uh, just to recap, in case you missed it, part one covered inline internal and external CSS and then I went into selectors, properties and values, the things that make up CSS rules and how priority and specificity kind of play into all of that stuff. And I also talked about how you can apply colors with CSS, you know, font and background colors. Um, and then uh, I talked a little bit about fonts, uh, how you can apply different different kinds of fonts, font families, and then uh, some, importing something like Google fonts and using that in your HTML, applying that to your HTML, that is. So part one, in case you missed it, is all is now available on Twitch. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, CSS box model and how uh, you can use the Firefox, the built-in inspector in Firefox to look at different different stuff. Um, that will kind of flow into margins and padding. And uh, I'll, also talk, uh, I'll also touch a little bit on width and height. Um, Margins and padding are slightly more uh, involved in width and height, but I'll talk about all four uh, CSS properties. And then uh, you can also uh, change your borders, the way your borders appear uh, in CSS, so I'll talk a bit about that. And then I'll wrap things up with uh, how you can use comments in CSS. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, just a few things I wanted to point out real quickly before I proceed with today's content. So in uh, part one of this video, I said in, in the link tag, you have this uh, type attribute with uh, value of text slash CSS. Um, turns out if you're using HTML5, like I am here, uh, you don't need to have this, all right? The browser, the browser will apply your CSS just fine uh, without having the type attribute in there. So you don't need that. Okay, so uh, and one other thing, um, I should have pointed out to you last time, I but I didn't, so I apologize. But um, say uh, say you wanted to apply, a, you know, one or more CSS declarations uh, to uh, more than one element in your CSS. So, for example, if I want to apply a background color to this div, all right, and this div down here, uh, that's that's the new div I've, inclu I've included here. Um, so, if you wanted to apply a background color to just those two divs. Then I could I could simply use the uh, class names, all right, and then separate them by a comma. So this way, what you're doing is you're targeting more than one selector at a time, um, and then you can apply whatever CSS you want to more than one div or more than one element at the same time. Okay, so. So I have my two class names, introduction and third div. And then I can just say background, background color, and, and whatever color you want. Okay, so it's just a simple example, but um, thought I should point that out to you before I before I proceed with part two. All right. All right. So here we go. This is the uh, CSS box model. All right. And um, by the way, this page comes straight from the uh, MDN web docs. So that's what I'm looking at. MDN stands for Mozilla Developer Network. All right. But um, this is a good simple representation of the box model. So uh, the idea behind the box model is that all HTML elements are represented by this uh, 2D, uh, 2D box or 2D element, uh, 2D representation. Okay. So you have uh, inside you have what what is the uh, content? Okay. So the content has a width and a height. Okay, and the content can be your, you know, images, uh, text, links, whatever it is. So that's your content, and um, the content edge is the uh, boundary, all right, where your content ends. Okay, so between that and uh, this edge is your padding. Okay, so that's your padding. Uh, the padding separates the uh, edge of your content uh, from the uh, edge of your container the uh, the uh, HTML container, all right. So surrounding all of this is your border, and then surrounding all of that is margin. Okay. 
so margin is external, padding is is internal. All right, and you can actually uh, control all of the all of these via CSS. You can apply different uh, a different width, different height. You can control all four uh, edges of your padding, uh, all four areas of your padding, I should say, and then all four edges of the border, and then uh, your margin as well. So let's take a quick look at uh, how all this uh, works in the browser. So I have this um, window open. I'm going to close this so you can actually see uh, how I opened that. So this is my uh, code from uh, last time. Okay. Uh, this is just another div I added, so that's the only difference. So if you right-click anywhere inside the window, um, you get this uh, menu, and you can see this uh, down here. Uh, it says Inspect Element. So you click on that, and that brings up this uh, nice uh, three-pane window, all right, uh, which you can resize. You can resize each of these panes uh, to your liking, and you can uh, vertically resize the whole window as well. Now, I'll briefly go over all, of, all three of these panes from left to right. So this is your HTML, okay, this over here is your HTML, um, and essentially uh, this is code that represents what what you're seeing here in the, in the browser okay so this is the code you've written in your in my case it is all of this okay so uh, that's html uh, this is your css pane so right now it, it appears blank because i don't have any css that i've written uh on my own uh, whatever CSS is being applied, um, you can see uh, the uh, yellow shading there, that's the margin uh, for my H1, um, paragraph tag, whatever CSS is being applied is uh, by the uh, browser, uh, is, is, is default, in other words. And if you see this, um, this icon here, if you click on this, it will actually highlight the HTML element uh, that you've currently selected in your HTML pane. All right, it will highlight that element with whatever margin or padding or part or whatever is being applied to it. So uh, that's a handy, uh, a handy tool to have. And you can click that to uh, toggle it on and off. Now this pane on the right shows, uh, gives, gives you a few options. Uh, what we're concerned with is this box model. So the box model tab actually gives you a representation of the box model itself with respect to whatever html element you've selected currently in your html pane okay so if, if i select all of these different um, html elements you can see the values for some of the um, some of the css properties change change in the um, in the pane over here so my H1, I have a width of 1,200 pixels, and these are all in pixels, by the way. So 1,200 pixels, um, 37 pixels height, and then I have a top and bottom margin of 21.4 pixels, okay? Um, and you can see, um, if I mouse over, it gives you a dotted line, a dashed line at the bottom. You can actually click on any of these uh, values if you want to do some testing or take a look at um, different values, how they look in the in the browser itself. So you can change any of these, um, you know, say if I do 30, then it changes the top margin on my H1, um, and so on. So it's a, this is a really nice uh, tool uh, to have when you're working with, uh, uh, web, working on web projects, uh, working with HTML, CSS. Uh, gives you um, kind of a nice playground of sorts to work with, all right, to, to um, test out different things. Um, and you can also actually, you can also go ahead and inside here in your HTML pane, uh, it allows you to change the, the um, HTML as well. So if for some reason um, you want to change something like text or anything, you know, uh, you can do that. Uh, Obviously, that was some that was some uh, gibberish I, I typed for just just to show you, but uh, you get the idea. So uh, yeah, this is uh, like I said, this is a really uh, neat tool to have, um, and I use it a lot myself when I'm working on anything uh, related to uh, web development. So 
Um, what we'll do now is uh, I'll go ahead and um, uh, get into get uh, go a little bit in, more into detail uh, with uh, margins and padding, right? Uh, but I will keep this I will keep this up so you can see um, whatever changes I I make into my CSS. All right. All right. So uh, these are the uh, uh, the CSS property names for applying margin or padding. So they're kind of self-explanatory, right? So if you want to apply a top margin, it's margin top. If you want to apply some margin on the right, it's margin right, and so on, right? Margin bottom, margin left. <coughs> and the same for your padding, okay? Now, if you want to apply just one margin all around, it's just margin, and then, so if you say margin uh, 25 pixels, it will apply a 25 pixel margin all around your HTML element. Um, same for your padding. Okay, so fairly straightforward. All right, so what I want to do now is uh, you see the uh, text here, uh, my HTML text. I want to bring this in away from the uh, edge of the viewport just a little. So, um, so what I'm going to do is uh, use this uh, class wrapper on on this div. All right, this div right here. Um, use that to uh, add some margin on the left and right. So I'm gonna target the class and just do a left and right margin. Okay. Now, if I do a control space here, just to quickly show you um, this menu that comes up. So you have a choice of uh, the units over here, right? You can use pixels, you can specify percentages. Uh, EM and REM uh, units are uh, also quite widely used these days, but that's more for responsive web design. So I'm not gonna uh, use those right now. Um, I'll keep things simple um, and stick with pixels for now, all right? So left margin of 30 pixels, right margin, 30 pixels. Let's keep it consistent on both sides. And I'm also gonna go ahead and reapply a font family. And for now, I'll just stick with Arial. Okay, so I'll save that. And I'll refresh my browser. All right, so that looks slightly better. All right. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, I didn't want to continue using Times New Roman. That's the default. So. All right, cool. Um, so I'm going to go in my HTML pane here in the in the inspector and uh, just quickly show you something. Um, so you see when I mouse over the H1, it has a top and bottom margin, right? And if I click on it, it says by default, it's 21.4 pixels top and bottom. If I mouse over the paragraph tag, it also has uh, a margin, right? By the yellow, you can see by the yellow shading. So if I click on that, it says 16 pixels uh, top and bottom, right? I'm gonna keep the H1 selected with, with this icon here. So I'm going to keep the H1 selected. Um, but now you see where the margin is, right? The H, the bottom margin of the H1 basically runs along the uh, top edge of the text of the paragraph tag, right? Now if I mouse over the paragraph, you see what, you see what I'm uh, looking at? So I know the paragraph has 16 pixels of top margin, but when I mouse over it, it's like the uh, H1's uh, bottom margin uh, completely takes over. That's exactly what's going on. Uh, this is called margin collapsing, all right? And uh, this happens uh, basically when you have two vertical margins um, that are competing with each other, like in this, like in this case. Um, the larger margin, the larger of the two will essentially take over, all right? And it's like the smaller margin never existed. So that's margin collapsing. And I've seen, uh, you know, based on what I've seen uh, from my research, uh, there are various suggestions that people have made for a workaround uh, on this to this issue. Um, some people suggest zeroing out the top margins on your elements uh, in, when you have block level elements like this, and then there's just using a bottom margin. Uh, some people suggest the opposite, okay. But um, just wanted to kind of throw this out there to let you know, hey, this is something that goes on with vertical margins. Now for your personal projects, when you're on a basic level, you can just kind of play around with your margins, right? 
So just to get the spacing you want. All right, so um, I'll go ahead and uh, deselect this one. So I'm going to go back to my code now and just show you quickly show you I'm going to apply some padding to my paragraph element. So and that's uh, this one here. OK. So I'm going to just simply target the paragraph like so and um, add some padding. I'll just do 20 pixels. And I save that. I'm going to refresh the browser. All right, so you see um, it definitely has applied the padding because the, uh, the paragraph itself shifted down and then it shifted the uh, content below it downwards as well. Okay, so uh, padding is uh, independent of neighboring elements. All right, um, margin is, because padding is internal, margin is external. And uh, you can see here, if I mouse over it, you can see the padding all around the paragraph tag, right, in purple. And if I click on it, this will update my CSS pane, uh, shows me the padding that I've applied in my CSS file. Now, if I mouse over it, this is what I like about the inspector. You can actually uh, uncheck the uh, declaration that you have made in your CSS. All right, and just kind of see how it works. Toggling, you can toggle it on and off like a switch. Okay, so cool. Okay, so that's uh, padding. Um, and uh, you know how you, uh, how I showed you the uh, properties here, right? The margin top, margin right, margin bottom, margin left, and same for padding. Um, uh, sometimes uh, you want to use, um, a, you know, like, a, for example, you want to use just one value for a certain set of margins or padding. For example, top and uh, bottom margin is one value, and then left and right margin, you want to apply a separate value. Um, so there's a, there are shorthand notations you can use for both margin and padding. Okay, so I already showed you the one value notation, right? Where you just say margin something, padding something. Uh, there is a two value notation. So this works uh, in this order. So the first value is applied to your top and bottom margin or padding. And the second value will be applied to your left and right margin or padding. All right. So that's how the two value works. The three value notation, um, you have the first value, which is for your top margin, the second for your left and right, and the third for the bottom margin. Okay, same same for padding. And then you have this handy uh, four value notation. Um, and this used to confuse uh, me quite a bit. So um, just something I thought I'd just, you know, include, uh, I included this, I drew this silly clock picture myself here. But uh, I, do this, I do this in paint, by the way. Um, but uh, I, it took me a while to realize, and I found this out uh, eventually. Um, uh, I didn't figure it out on my own. I, I actually did some research on this because no one, I actually didn't know about this. But um, uh, th these go in uh, clockwise order. So uh, once I found out, found out these are clockwise, that, that kind of clicked in my head. So uh, this first one applies to the top, the second to the right, the third to the bottom, and the last one to the left. So that's how these work, all right. So that's uh that's margins and padding shorthand. All right. So uh, one last thing I want to show you uh, before I move on to width and height is uh, show you how um, margins and padding work with inline elements. All right, like these, for example, these uh, span elements that I have here. Um, so with inline elements, uh, margins and padding behave a little bit differently. So. I'm going to write some CSS for these two span elements uh, to which I've given these creative class names, first span and second span. All right. So I have a pretty dry sense of humor, so I'm sorry about that. Um, first span. So I'm going to say padding. I'm going to give it a top and bottom padding of 20 pixels. All right, and then do the same thing for the uh, second span element, but uh, this time give it uh, 
top and bottom margin of 20 pixels. All right. So I'll save that and go back to my browser and, and, and uh, refresh. Okay. So nothing happens, right? All right. So let's uh, take a look here um, in my HTML pane. So when I mouse over this uh, span element, the first one that I, that I applied the, uh, the padding, the top and bottom padding to, um, Firefox uh, actually picks up on that, right? It realizes, uh, it, it recognizes the top and bottom padding, but uh, visually nothing takes effect, right? It's uh, everything is still the same as it was before. Um, and then the second span element, if I mouse over that one, you can see the margins being uh, recognized by the browser, but again, nothing, there's no visual effect. So uh, this is uh, so you, so this is how um, margins and padding uh, work with uh, inline elements. Uh, and and by, by the way, this is only for top and bottom uh, margin and padding. Okay, so inline elements won't honor the um, the top and bottom padding or or margin. All right. So if you apply, if you try to apply that, it won't work. But um, say if I change this to uh, left and right padding. Okay, so padding left, padding right, and then margin left, margin right. All right, save that, and then refresh my browser. Now you can see there's actually some visual representation, all right, of the padding on the first one and the margin on the second one, okay. So when I mouse over the first span element, you can see the padding in the purple shading, and then the second one, you can see the margin uh, in the yellow, which has been applied as well. All right. So uh, that's how uh, that's how padding works, part padding and margin works, I should say, with uh, inline elements. Uh, so that pretty much wraps up margins and padding uh, on a basic level. Um, I will now uh, I'll show you some uh, stuff with width and height now. All right. So these are the CSS width and height properties. Okay, and um, if you recall from the uh, CSS box model uh, that I showed you from the MDN page, the width and height apply only to the content by default. Okay, not to the whole, not to the whole element, just just the content. Okay, so um, you can set width using the width property or the height using the height property and then you have these other ones okay min width max width min height max height and all these are all that these are doing is still in the browser the smallest your uh, html element can get with respect to the width or the height or the or the largest it can get use with respect to the width and the height okay um so if i say min width 400 pixels on a, on an element and and the browser viewport uh, goes smaller than 400 pixels, the element's not going to keep shrinking. Okay, it will, it will um, stop at 400 pixels while the browser viewport, you know, may get smaller. Okay, um, but in this case, uh, because it's min width, uh, that's the smallest it will get. But it can get small. It can get larger than the. Um, it can stretch with the browser viewport. So the viewport goes larger than 400 pixels. The uh, the uh, element. Uh, will definitely stretch uh, more than 400 pixels okay and of course uh, this is all uh, this is all subjected to uh, you know other stuff like margins and everything being set because again this is with respect to the content okay uh, max width uh, works in a similar manner um, but does the opposite so uh, if you say max width 400 pixels and um, the uh, the browser viewport increases in size and and if it, if it gets larger than 400 pixels, uh, the element is going to max out at 400 pixels wide, okay? Uh, it's not going to increase in width more than that, but it will it will shrink along with the browser. If the browser viewport goes less than 400 pixels, it, it will shrink along with, uh, with, the, with the viewport, okay? So, um, and, that's how, and that's how these work. Uh, min height and max height work in a similar manner, okay? So... Uh, what I want to do now is using this uh, div here with the class introduction, I want to apply some width and height to that. So I, I just want to show you how this all works. And you can see right now, um, when I mouse over it, and also in this uh, box model, 
representation. The uh, width is 980 pixels, height is 76 pixels. So I'll, I can change both of those. I'll just change both of those, show you a quick example. And set the width to 400 pixels, the height to 200 pixels. And then save that. And then refresh my page. And uh, so you can see the uh, the width is now 400 pixels. Uh, height is 100 pixels, and you can actually verify that here. Okay, and again, this is only for the content, okay, not the whole HTML element. So um, that's that's how you can change the width and height. And what I want to do is keep the width and height, but I want to center this. I want to center the whole div, okay, and then uh, and then I'll show you some other some other stuff with it. Um, and I, that way I can show show uh, some of the other remaining properties to you a little bit better. Um, in terms of borders and such. But what I want to do right now is uh, center it. So uh, there's a really easy way to do that with block level elements, but you, you have to specify the width. Okay, If you don't specify that, uh, this method will not work. So what you do is just say margin, set the left margin to auto and set the right margin to auto. All right. So when you set uh, when you set the left and right margins to auto and you have a width that you've specified, uh, what the browser will do is uh, calculate equal margins on the left and right side, and so that will center your 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 HTML element. Okay. So if I refresh the page, now you can see the whole div is centered with equal left and right margins. Okay. So. In the inspector, if you uh, kind of toggle the width on and off, so I'm going to toggle the width off for now. See that, and then that actually um, results in the content being where back in the place where it was. But if I turn the width on, if I switch it on again, now it's now it's centered perfectly. Okay, so so yeah, so that's uh, width and height. Um, uh, let's move on to borders. Okay, so I know information overload, right? Uh, but uh, these are uh, the various ways you can apply borders in CSS. Okay, so um, when you want to apply a border, you need you definitely need style, the the style uh, border style uh, property, um, and then you can also specify the width of the border using this property or the color. Okay, using border color, um, or you can specify one or more using just border. Okay. Um, but uh, the, the the kind of the common denominator is you have to specify the style. If you don't specify style, the uh, width and or the color properties will not will not work. Okay. So um, I'm going to try and explain each of these um, as best as I can. So we'll start with border. So if you use uh, just border by itself, the border property. So again, like I said, you need style, and then you can specify um, your width or your color for the border, or you can specify both in addition to the style. Okay, so you can do this. You can say border solid, and uh, that will just apply a default, you know, default solid border. Or you can say border uh, dotted, so that's the style of, style of border, and then green for the color. Or you can uh, specify all three at once. You can say border two pixels in thickness, um, uh, solid, uh, for the style and orange for the color. Okay. Uh, here's what here's what will not work. If you just say border green or say border one pixel red, so uh, the browser is going to look at this and say, well, you haven't specified the style of border, so um, I'm not going to do anything. It will just ignore. It will just ignore those uh, declarations. All right. Now you can actually specify each of these separately using these. Uh, these properties, okay, um, and the uh, shorthand notation I have here, apply, you can you can use that for these, okay, all right, for border style, border width, border color. So if you use the one value notation now, if you remember the um, shorthand notation I showed you for margins and padding, this works in exactly the same way, except now we're looking at borders, right? The top border, 
uh, right border, bottom border, left border. So if you use one value um, for either of these, then the value applies to all four borders. Uh, two value notation, uh, top and bottom, the first value, and then the second value applies to your left and right borders. The three value notation, the first one goes to the top, the second to the left and right, the third to the bottom. And then you have the four value notation. This is where the clock makes every appearance, at least in my case. And um, then you can say top, right, bottom, left. You can specify a value for each separately. Okay. So uh, so that's how this works. And I'll show you a few examples in the um, in the in my HTML. So um, I have my um, CSS declarations for the introduction class for this div right here from, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and apply, apply a few borders, show you some examples. So let's say I'll just do border style and give it a dotted border. Okay, and say border red and um, border uh, width be f uh, three pixels. Okay. I'm going to refresh the page and there's my there's my dotted red border. Okay. So in this case the size of the dots is actually you know it's proportional to the pixel size. So if I in my inspector, if I just quickly kind of play around with it, say make if I make it six pixels, yeah, and I should say six pixels, right? So you can see the uh, size of the the size of the dots increases there. So so that's uh, that's one example. So uh, you can just kind of you know play around with different styles, colors, and widths for your border. Um, if you wanted to get really wacky, and I, I'm I'm totally not suggesting. Or recommending you do this. I just wanted to show you the uh, the uh, how you can use the shorthand properties, and this is a code I've I'm pa I've pasted here from uh, from earlier. I I did some some tinkering around with my code, so you can use the uh, shorthand properties that uh, the uh, for example the you know any of these the any of these ones for your style width and border color, and uh, make a really wacky border, so. Um, if I refresh the page here, and I zoom in here, you can see the uh, you can see that I have a dash purple, a dotted blue, a green solid, and a and a red on the on the left. So, but yeah, um, that's just for demonstration purposes. Uh, so we'll go back to we'll go back to what we had. So I'll just actually what I'll do is um, go ahead and just apply a two pixel green border. Okay. All right, save that, and, and did I do something wrong? Oh, <laughs> I'm talking. I'm all. I did it at target types with my with my fingers. I uh, wanted a two pixel solid green border. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Yeah, I don't actually have target types, but I was uh, typing what I was talking, uh, or I was typing what I was saying. And now I'm officially losing my losing my head. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's how you that's how you work with borders. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here, just to kind of you know. And um, if you see here on the left side, uh, the uh, text is basically hugging the border, right? There's absolutely no space, and that's because we don't have any padding. So I'm gonna go and apply some padding. Make that 15. Just apply some 15 pixels of padding all around. That's a little bit better. Let me go ahead and zoom out to 150. Okay, 150%. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so one other thing, I uh, just want to quickly show you guys. Um, so coming back here, you see the uh, content is, when we have specified the width and height, that's still applying to the content, right? By default, that's what it does. Um, but uh, a lot of times what you want to do is include the padding and the border um, into the equation because um, for 
a lot of HTML layouts, uh, it, it makes sense to include the padding and border. Okay, so uh, there's an easy way to do that, and you can do this do it with a property called box sizing. Okay, and then the value we're gonna use is border box. Okay, so what this does is uh, it tells the browser to use your uh, to include the uh, the uh, border and the padding into the total width and height of the element. Okay. So if I come back here, refresh the page, they can see what happened. Uh, do you see what happened there? That the the, the, uh, the entire element, the border kind of, you know, was kind of drawn in the content shrank. Um, and when I mouse over this, now you can see the uh, total width including the border and padding is now 400 pixels wide, 150 pixels in height, all right? So that's not the, uh, the width and height is not being applied to the content, just the content anymore. It's including the padding and border uh, into the total width and height, okay? Zoom back in a little bit more. Um, and just to show you, uh, now the, uh, I've zoomed out completely to the default just to show you the actual width and height here. So of the content. So the uh, content width is 366 pixels now, and the height of the content is 116 pixels. Okay, and it's it's factoring in the 15. The total width and height is now being factored into uh, for the uh, for the element. Uh, it's factoring in the padding and the border. Okay. So that's how a box sizing border box works. And if I toggle that off, so if I temporarily uh, exclude that from the CSS, you can see how the, you can see how the um, uh, width and height change, right? Because we have, because box sizing border box again takes into account padding and border, okay? So that's how that works. Actually, uh, one thing I should have shown you before, uh, is uh, when you're using this box sizing property with the border box, um, uh, I've seen a lot of developers do this. They will uh, target the HTML element and then put it directly in there. All right. So this way you don't have to keep reapplying the box sizing property for all your HTML, HTML elements. Uh, once you put it inside here by targeting the HTML, uh, that will apply to all of your elements. Okay, so just wanted to quickly point that out. So comments in CSS are simply done with a forward slash asterisk, some text inside, and then a closing asterisk and forward slash. Okay, so so if you want to put a comment or something and uh, for your CSS code or something like that, then you just do simply like like this. So All right, so something like that. Now, of course, this is a pretty simple example, but you get the idea. Um, and um, the uh, there are some uses for comments, uh, which come in pretty handy. So you can see this is my uh, this is the CSS for my portfolio. My portfolio my portfolio is just a single page, okay, uh, a single scrolling page, uh, but it has different sections to it. And so I've kind of sectioned off my code with comments. All right. That way, I that way I know which uh, which code applies to which section uh, pretty quickly. So I have a general style section uh, that applies you know, the CSS applies to the whole the whole page, and then I have a section for CSS which applies to header navigation and introduction sections, and so on and so forth. Uh, code examples, resume section, all that all that stuff, and then I have some multi line uh, CSS uh, excuse me multi line comments here. Um, which I've done, you, you do the same way, all right? Uh, opening and closing, uh, forward slash asterisk. And um, I do this so that, uh, you know, uh, whatever um, whatever stuff I know I'm going to forget, I have kind of a handy reference section. I don't have to go looking for it anywhere. It's right here in my CSS file, all right? So stuff for my images, color codes, uh, borders, typography, uh, you know, stuff I know I'm... I'm gonna have a hard time remembering. So, 
So that's how you use comments, and comments come in, like I said, pretty handy for stuff like this. All right. So that wraps up part two, guys. I uh, hope you found that useful. Um, some of you had some questions about contact information after part one of this video. So my name is Ameya Joshi, and uh, you can find me in Slack or Twitch. My handle is at coderaj7470. Uh, preferred method of contact is, of course, in Techlahoma Slack. I'm a lot more active there than I'm on Twitch, but feel free to leave me uh, comments or questions, suggestions in either one. And I most definitely welcome your feedback and constructive criticism. I am new at making such videos, so of course there is always room for improvement. So I, I definitely welcome uh, any any suggestions or any improvements you have in mind uh, for my videos. All right. Uh, just real quickly before I go, a big shout out to Techlahoma, Starspace 46, and Freecode Camp OKC for making these meetups possible. Um, without without these organizations, we wouldn't have all of these awesome resources to learn from. All right, so big thumbs up to all of them. Uh, thanks once again, guys. Appreciate your time today, and you have a great rest of the day.